Abutai, today we're learning a sefer called Binyan Olam. What does it speak about? It speaks about the power of Torah. It speaks this whole, this this is a whole sefer speaking about the, the power of learning Torah. Now, a quote, I read, we'll start. Perek Aleph. You had a mitzvah and you had a learning. He's going from the Rambam. If the mitzvah could be done through others, don't stop learning. But if the mitzvah cannot be done through others, then you stop. But, notice what the words that Rambam says. You have to come back to learn. Understand what's going on over here? So again, let's go. Imagine now, what happens? There's a mitzvah. Right? There's a mitzvah. Uh, whatever mitzvah may be. Let's say it's a mitzvah of chesed, the kindness. You're in the shul. And, uh, and some chesed, a kindness has to be done. And, uh, and you're learning. There's another person that's not learning at all. And he's not going to be learning, right? But you know there's a mitzvah to be done. So who takes that mitzvah? This person you continue learning, right? This is the halacha. Ve'katav kesef mishneh. Kesef mishneh brings down. Nimnu that wa. It quotes a whole story about the situation. So again, again, if you're learning and somebody else can do the mitzvah, what does it say? I, it says don't stop learning. If nobody else can do the mitzvah but you, then you stop your learning and make sure to come back as soon as you're done with the mitzvah. Is that clear? Next. What's the reason why? It says over here that the end tells the Torah shiur lamat. There's no shiur of learning. There's no set amount of Torah. Let's see where it says, "Oh yeah, I I learned uh, three hours today." There's no such thing as a set a uh, 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 limit of learning. No such thing. Why? A person has to love. He doesn't say. He says love, love, love the Torah so much. That's what a person has to do. Now I'm going to add. The reason is because it's called, it's, it's the Devar Hashem. What does it mean, Devar Hashem? It's like, Kivachol, like we always say, it's when you're praying, you're, you're talking, when you're davening, you're praying, you're talking to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. When you're learning, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is talking to you. The Shekinah is there, he's right there, Mamash, standing in front of you. There's a very famous story with one of the briskas, how one of the times he saw Havruta, he, he, he saw one guy not learning. And he says, why can we not learning? He says, Mahavruta is not here. And he tells him over, he says, listen, when you're not, not here, it says in Pekah Avot that when you're learning, the Shekhinah comes and sits in front of you. So Yahavrutah is not here, but Hashem is in front of you, sitting. You know what I'm saying? You're going to make him wait? You're right, Yahavrutah is not here. You're going to make Hashem wait? It's going to be. So it's very important learning. Very, very important. And it's very important that what? That the mothers instill in the children, you know, a lot of times the fathers are not home, and there's that, the mothers have to show a love of the learning, wow, daddy's learning, wow, you're going to shiur, wow, you're making a, a, there's a, there was a person in our community, a rabbi in our community, he just finished shas, and you know what he got up and said, he said when I was a little boy, he said when he was in fourth grade, he said he finished a certain mishnayot, and his mother made a big, big party, for him, to finish the Mishnayot, whatever he finished. And he, she had a book, a, a book, where she wrote every child, she finished Mishnayot this, this year, at this time. Boom, boom, boom. At fourth grade, even fifth grade. And this boy, as he was growing older, it motivated him that every time he finished something, his mother said, Look, 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 look at my book. Look, 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 look what I have you. You did this last year, you did this two years ago, you did this three years ago. Wow, I'm so happy for you, I'm so happy. Because this is, a, you understand, there's a mother's encouragement. For a child, it's the greatest thing. And likewise, for a wife to a husband. When a wife understands that, he's saying, you have to show love for the Torah. When a wife goes all out and says, you know, wow, you're learning, Wow. You're doing it. Wow, I'm so proud of you. I'm so, so, you make me so proud. This is already 
a husband always wants to make his wife happy. A husband always wants to make his wife happy. So therefore, when, when, when he knows that his wife is encouraging him, wow, this is amazing, this is the greatest thing, and this, 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 this that. So you, you're showing him love of the Torah that you have. It, it's the greatest joy ever. It's the greatest joy ever. There was one time a lady, this I know first hint. My friend, Rabbi Yishai bin David, he, could, he, could, he told me this, and he was eyewitness to the story. Listen to this. He tells me that Many years ago, he ate when he was uh, he ate when he first got married. He ate by 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 a certain a certain uh, couple's house, and what happened was he went to shul, and his Robinson was with the other with the host with the, with the host lighting the the Shabbat candles. And they lit the Shabbat candles, and then they sat and they spoke about a story. What was the story? This is a story first hand story. What happens? She says over to Rabbi Yishev and David's uh, Robinson, she says, listen what happened. What happened was, a few years back, my sister, this is the host saying, my sister got a Cartier gold watch with diamonds for her birthday. She says, what? what? That's crazy. Like, from, from her husband. So she's thinking in her mind, maybe my husband, was my husband going to get me? You know, this is her mind. She says like this. She says, what happened was, what happened was, her husband asked her if he, he she doesn't mind because he was in, he was, he was lear, learning, all the time he was always learning. She says, do you mind if two hours Friday afternoons I sit and learn? So sure, but you can't bother me. I'm in my room learning, stagging, no bothering. Give me two hours every single. Sure. About three, four years later, she sees a letter, an envelope in an envelope, where by the candle lighting, her husband went to shul and he left the letter. Dear to my dearest wife, you should just know that you gave me these past years two hours every Friday with no bothersome and I was able to sit and learn. And I finished Mesecha Pesachim. I'd like, to, I'd like to let you know, I dedicated it every single time I learned in your honor. This is your Mesecha. I'm giving it to you completely to you. This is what, this is what he, she said. She felt so happy. It's the joy. And we came home, you don't understand that. It's when a, when a wife shows her husband, I love when you learn. It's the greatest thing. Or when a mother shows her son, I love when you're learning. Or, or whatever it is. Or you yourself get encouragement that you're learning. You have to mehabev the Torah. You have to love the Torah. You have to have an extreme love for the Torah. One of the reasons why in every Mesechet at the end, if you look, when we make a siyum, everything is papa. What's my papa, 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 papa? He's he had ten sons, and every single time, every single masechet when we finish, we always speak about his sons. Why? One of them, if Hashim bring down, you know why? Because every single time he finished, he made such a kavod of the Torah, making a siyum, making a grand blowout, wow party. This is the love of the Torah that we have. With who that? With who that? Says we're going to mention every one of his children every single every single time we finish. Because we have to show the love of the Torah. We have to show how much we love it. Oh, ah, you're holding up the world when you're learning Torah. Wow. Give encouragement. When you see a Ben Torah, you see a guy sitting and learning, go ahead. Give him encouragement. Tell him, by the way, you're holding up the world. Because it's true. You're holding up the world. On three things the world stands on. Torah is the first standing. That's what it says. But the first one is Torah. Al shoshah devarim al lamamed al Torah al avodah al gemilu hasadim. You give him encouragement. You know you're holding up the world. You're holding up the world. Keep it up. Let me chayil chayil. Give him, give him the encouragement. Give him it. Like that, you have a school. Why? He sees that. He feels that. You know what? People are encouraging me to learn. I want to learn more. I want to steig harder. Give him a pat on the back. Continue. Continue. You get all of my buff for that. Have a good day.